Luke, the doctor who is writing this account of the gospel. Luke loved to pair people together in his gospel. He, he made sure to tell not just one of their stories, but both of their stories. He just loved to do that. So over the last several weeks, as we were preparing to tell the story of Mary, I've got to be honest with you, I was really struggling. Like, how am I going to put myself in Mary's shoes and share her story? So this morning, I've asked our uh, communications director and really a, a student of God's word, Bree, uh, that if Bree would come out and help us. Uh, so for the next few minutes, she's going to share Tell Mary's story from her perspective. So would you guys welcome Bree as she comes out this morning? So when we first meet Mary, she's just a young girl. Most scholars think she's around 16 to 18 years old, and she's engaged to Joseph. Um, this is a really exciting time in her life full of anticipation. Engagement back then wasn't what we think of it today. It was more of a legal binding contract between two people, and in order to break it, they would need to be divorced. So everyone in their small town already considered them to be husband and wife, but they weren't living together yet, and they hadn't slept together. This engagement period usually lasted around six to 12 months, and it would end with a wedding feast where they would celebrate, and then Mary and Joseph would go to the house that Joseph had built for them. So everything happening in Luke's 1 and 2 is happening against this backdrop. So imagine this. Mary's at home with her parents, and she's likely planning her wedding, daydreaming about what decorations they'd have, what food they'd serve, and who they'd invite. She's preparing to walk down the aisle towards Joseph in her wedding dress and begin the rest of their lives. When all of a sudden, God interrupts everything. God sent an angel named Gabriel to give a message to Mary a message that would change her life forever and eventually ours. It's the kind of moment that can leave you stunned. One minute, your life's going smooth and perfect, and the next, it's entirely flipped upside down. Have you ever been there? Um, a few years ago, the Lord called me to leave Birmingham, where I was comfortable and life made sense, and move here, a place where I had no family, very few connections, and for a job where I felt underqualified. And if you know me at all, you know that I am a bit of a planner, and I'm not much of a risk taker. And so all of this didn't make sense to me. I like when things are logical and perfectly planned and all the details come together. Yet in this season of uncertainty, I felt nothing but peace. I knew that God wanted me in this place for this season and this time. I trusted him. Sure, all of the questions were still racing through my head. I'm sure my mom, who received all the phone calls, could tell you but they paled in comparison to the supernatural peace that I felt about my decision. God indeed does provide a peace that surpasses all understanding. And that's where I think we find Mary today. The angel's message is as big as it gets. Mary, God has chosen you to give birth to his son. And she's not filled with doubt, but honest confusion. How can this be? I think you've got the wrong girl because what you just said is impossible. It wasn't that she didn't trust God, it's that it just didn't make sense. It wasn't logical. She wasn't married yet, and she hadn't done anything to lead to pregnancy. From her perspective, and if we're being honest, from ours, it was impossible. But here's what makes Mary so remarkable, her faith. She trusted God even though it didn't make sense. Instead, of, she said something like, okay, I'll do it, I'll be a part of God's plan, but you're going to have to explain to me how this is going to work because it makes no sense to me. Real faith is believing God for the impossible, even when it doesn't make sense and we don't have all the answers. Real faith is trusting God in the midst of uncertainty and believing for a miracle, even when the facts butt up against it. In this part of the story, Mary believed God, and he, she believed that this was true. She just didn't know how it was going to happen. So once again, God sent Gabriel to reassure Mary that his spirit would come upon her and it would overshadow her. The word used here means to dwell or to pitch a tent or to tabernacle. It's the same word describing God's presence with the Israelites in the wilderness and in the temple and with us here today. This is the same word used to describe the Holy Spirit dwelling in Mary. This wasn't going to happen in an ordinary way. It was divine. It was miraculous. 
she would carry and give birth to the Son of God. Even with this explanation, I can't help but stop and think about what must be racing through Mary's mind. How in the world am I going to explain this to Joseph? Will he ever believe me? And then there's my reputation. How, how am I going to tell my mom? What are these people going to say? What are the rumors that are going to be spreading around? In the honor-shame culture of the East, Mary's reputation was everything. There were real consequences for breaking social rules. By saying yes to God, Mary knew that she was opening herself up to gossip, judgment, and shame, not just for herself, but for her family and for Joseph, too. Can you picture the whispers around Nazareth? Did you hear what happened to Mary? She's pregnant, and it's not even Joseph's baby. Do you think he's going to leave her? Mary knew all of this. She knew what saying yes would cost her, but she still did it. She put God's plan above her own comfort, her dreams, and her reputation. She was willing to trust him even when it didn't make sense. And that's what real faith is. Real faith is saying, God, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I'm choosing to trust you in this moment. It's believing God can do the impossible even when you don't have all the answers. See, Mary's story reminds us that in the midst of uncertainty, faith doesn't mean the absence of questions. It means trusting God in the middle of them. So as you picture Mary in this moment, remember this. She wasn't just saying yes to being the mother of Jesus. She was saying no to herself. She was surrendering her dreams, her plans, and her comfort to be a part of something so much bigger and better than herself. And that's why in the midst of uncertainty, God found her faithful. And so this morning, may we echo the same words that Mary spoke in our own lives over our own situations. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word.